Hey there, I'm Carrie, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Edgar Allan Poe. Now, if you're looking for information on some of his specific short stories or poems, I've made separate videos about those, so I will link that playlist in the video notes. So first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about his personal life, then the era that he grew up in, some of the things that were happening on the national and international stage, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the influence that he's had, the genres he's worked in, and his continuing legacy in Western literature. I've got timestamps in the video notes, so definitely scroll down, click around, and find exactly what it is you need. All right, without further ado, let's talk Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe was born in 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts to the Poe family. His parents were both theater actors. Now, his father unfortunately abandoned the family not long after he was born and died soon after. His mother, when he was just a toddler, died of tuberculosis. After that, he and his biological siblings were split up and raised separately. Poe was taken in by the Allen family, hence the name Edgar Allen Poe. And though they didn't formally adopt him at any point, uh, he was raised by them, he was educated with them, spent his life with them, and he remained close with his foster mother until uh, she passed away as well when he was 20. Now, as a young adult, he floundered a little bit. Um, he enrolled at the University of Virginia, but he only stayed for a year. But at that time, he actually started writing seriously. After that, at just 18 years old, he enrolled in the military where he served for two years. Now, during this time, he actually published his first two books of poetry. After his foster mother passed away when he was 20, his foster father helped him uh, kind of break his enlistment in the military and enroll in West Point. Now, West Point didn't really suit him. He only stayed for a few months, but he did publish his third book of poetry during that time. After he left West Point, he rejoined his biological family. That's his older brother, his aunt, and his cousin. And that was when he really started focusing in on writing, you know, focusing on making a career, making a living out of being a professional writer. He got a job at a literary magazine where he started building a pretty serious reputation as a literary critic. He wrote and published a novel. It's his only complete novel during this time, but he started writing short stories and those became some of his most famous work. Now, when he was 26 years old, he got married to his first cousin, who was 13 at the time. I don't even want to discuss all the things that are messed up about that. So let's just move on. They were married for 11 years until her death. She also died of tuberculosis, just like Poe's mother. Unfortunately, Edgar Allan Poe was throughout his life affected by substance abuse, alcoholism in particular, as was his older brother, as was their father. And his alcoholism really made it difficult for him to hold a job sometimes. You know, he would show up drunk on the job. He wouldn't get things done. Possibly that contributed to him leaving the University of Virginia and West Point early. After his wife passed away, his drinking got even worse. In 1849, Poe passed away at the age of 40. Now, the circumstances surrounding his death are odd. So, okay, here's how it happened. He was found wandering the streets of Baltimore apparently in somebody else's clothes. He was delirious. He didn't really know where he was, who he was, what was going on. Now, the people that discovered him and the doctors that attended him at the hospital uh, reported that he said the name Reynolds several times, but nobody knows what Reynolds may have been referring to. Now, officially, there is no cause of death known, but of course, people have speculated. A lot of people think it was a side effect of alcoholism or drug use. Some people suggest it could have been suicide. Some people suggest murder. It could have just been that he had an undiagnosed illness that went unchecked for too long. Um, whatever it was, we will never really know. Now let's talk about some of the things that were going on on the national and international stage. Now Poe was born in 1809, passed away in 1849, and there was a lot going on at the time. In the US, the temperance movement was starting to go national. Now the temperance movement called for moderation of alcohol. They really discouraged the use of hard liquor. The message was that hard liquor would ruin you. It would ruin your health, it would ruin your finances, it would wreck your job, it would wreck your family life. Also going on was the Second Great Awakening. This was a major Protestant religious movement. And it really focused a lot on 
an emotional appeal. It was an evangelical movement and evangelical did not have the same connotations then as it did now. Evangelical literally means like preaching, talking, spreading a message. And that is what this movement did. They focused on very emotional spoken messages, spoken sermons that appealed to the supernatural, really tried to um, push people's thoughts to the afterlife in order to encourage church attendance. Internationally, this time was known as the Age of Revolution. It was actually kicked off in the US in the 1770s with the American Revolution. And that spirit, you know, especially seeing that American victory, this revolutionary spirit moved to Europe and inspired a whole wave of revolutions. So people were really starting to question kind of for the first time, how they were ruled. They were starting to reject the idea of absolute monarchs, you know, absolute power belonging in the hands of one person. They were seeking constitutions. They were seeking written legal codes. They wanted a concrete form of government, a concrete law that they could look at rather than all the power sitting in the hand of one person. On the scientific front, germ theory was being developed and this was really going to upend what everyone had thought about contagious disease. Now, the first vaccine had just been developed about a decade before Poe was born. It was for smallpox. Contagious disease was a major concern then. Some of the big ones were bubonic plague, which, you know, a few centuries earlier was called the Black Death. Uh, so there was bubonic plague, there was smallpox, there was cholera. There was tuberculosis as well. And people had a lot of different ideas about what caused contagious disease. Uh, there was a lot of classist ideas. There was a lot of racist ideas. Uh, there were ideas that contagious disease was a result of moral failure and it was some kind of divine justice. So germ theory was about to hit the scene and reorganize all of these beliefs. In the medical field, psychiatry and psychology were starting to make huge strides. Uh, mood disorders like depression and anxiety were starting to be considered in the context of mental health. Also, the attitudes towards mental health patients was really making big shifts during this time. For centuries prior to this, people looked at those who struggled with mental illness as freaks, you know, animals even. They need to be kept away, locked away from the rest of society so we won't be exposed to them. So starting in the 19th century, that started to change. Doctors started to think of people with mental health struggles as patients. These people are sick. These people can be helped. A couple of other interesting medical discoveries of that time. The stethoscope was invented. Anesthesia came on the picture. And also morphine, the mighty morphine, became commercially available in 1827. Before we finish up, let's talk just a little bit about Poe's legacy on American and Western literature, some of the genres that he has really shaped with his work. The first one is the detective genre. So Poe, with his short stories, um, Murder in the Rue Morgue is one of the most famous ones, was actually one of the first people on the scene with detective fiction. Sherlock Holmes, which is a creation of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes would not be on the scene for another 50 years after this. So there is definitely some inspiration drawn from Poe there. So if you're a fan of the Sherlock Holmes character, if you like Agatha Christie's work, stories like Murder on the Orient Express or Death on the Nile is going to be hitting theaters. All of that draws from Edgar Allan Poe. Or if you're a fan of more modern stuff like uh, Nancy Drew or Elementary is another another Sherlock Holmes one, or The Alienist, that all kind of derives from Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, so Poe's most famous work was probably in the horror genre, and you know that horror is alive and well. If you're a fan of Stephen King or Anne Rice, they've both got some roots and inspiration coming from Edgar Allan Poe. Or if you like TV shows like American Horror Story or The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina or Penny Dreadful, these all uh, have roots in Edgar Allan Poe's work. A subgenre of horror is gothic. Gothic to Edgar Allan Poe would not have had quite the same connotations that it does 
for us. Gothic means related to the Middle Ages. It tends to be very dramatic. There are lots of kings and queens and faraway kingdoms and knights in shining armor and fair maidens and ivory towers. And uh, so if you like Dracula uh, or vampire fiction, just kind of in its many incarnations, definitely has gothic roots. Uh, if you like Phantom of the Opera, that has gothic roots. Just a few years ago, Guillermo del Toro directed Crimson Peak, which is a terrific example of kind of a modern piece of gothic film literature. Poe was also active in dark romance. So this is romance with kind of supernatural elements worked into it. Demons and angels, witches and vampires and werewolves kind of converging around a love story. This has been super popular for the last decade. Um, one of the big ones right now is the Shadowhunter Chronicles. So if you're a fan of the mortal instruments or the dark artifices, uh, stories like that, you are a fan of dark romance. You are a fan of Edgar Allan Poe. You didn't even know it. All right, that's about all I've got on Edgar Allan Poe. I hope you found some of that helpful. If you did, definitely please like and subscribe so you can know when the next story becomes available. If there's a different author that you're interested in, drop that in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And best of luck to you. I'll see you in the next chapter.